So Halo Infinite multiplayer is going to be free to play. That's the news that came out a couple days ago. It started as a rumor, then 343 confirmed it. And for the most part, it seems like people are happy about this, that Halo Infinite's multiplayer is free. Uh, I've seen some people who don't like it. Me personally, I think this is good for Halo. And I think because of this and some other contributing factors, Halo Infinite has the potential to see the largest player base we've ever seen in a Halo game. Because with the game being free to play, a launch title for the Xbox Series X, and this is only the second time ever Halo has been a launch title, and with it being available on PC uh, at launch, this is the first time ever a Halo game has been available on PC at launch, with all those things combined and some other smaller factors as well, uh, I think it's safe to say Halo Infinite will see the largest number of concurrent players out of any Halo game. Now, how long will all these people stick around before moving on to another game? Who knows? Uh, will Halo Infinite be the most played game on Xbox two years in a row like Halo 3 was? I uh, doubt that. But either way, I think Halo Infinite will have the largest player base we've ever seen in a Halo game. Now, is that the most important thing? No, just because there's a ton of people playing the game doesn't mean it's a quality game. It's always nice to have a large, healthy population on a game, sure, but just, be, just because it has a large population doesn't mean the game is good. And as I already said, I do think free-to-play is good for Halo Infinite. Uh, some people are against it. Uh, I understand why. Don't They don't like microtransactions. There might be an influx in cheaters. Uh, so I, under, I understand why some people aren't too happy about the free-to-play, but me personally, I think it is good for Halo Infinite, and, and, uh, you know, I'm someone, I'm someone who would actually prefer, I would prefer to play, to pay a set price for the game, 60 bucks for the game, and then pay 20 bucks for DLC packs down the line, I mean, <laughs> call me old-fashioned, but that's what I prefer, shit, I'd, I'd rather pay 80 bucks for Halo Infinite, and, 20 bucks for each DLC pack, if that meant no microtransactions. See, that's the thing. When I say that, when I say I'd rather pay a set price for the game and pay for DLC packs, I'm, a, I'm saying that assuming no microtransactions. But my main criticism when it comes to the, the model of free-to-play is microtransactions. Even if it's just cosmetic microtransactions, I'm not a huge fan of it. And in a community update that 343 put out on Halo Waypoint, which I'll be covering in a separate video, uh, there was a part where they said Halo Infinite will not include real money loot boxes. Okay, so it, that's nice to know. And that obviously doesn't mean no microtransactions. I mean, we know there's going to be microtransactions. And uh, you, you have to have microtransactions when a game is free to play. Uh, in this case, it's just the multiplayer, but a lot of people will just play the multiplayer and not buy the campaign. So just to make it clear, I'm obviously not against microtransactions in a free-to-play experience. I mean, that's that's kind of foolish because devs got to make money somehow. And one of the main reasons I'm not a huge fan of microtransactions in games is because those items that you can purchase, those items in the battle pass, I would prefer, and I'm sure many would, that th those items be earnable. Earnable is earnable a word? Uh, 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 I would, <laughs> I would hope those. Uh, I, w I would rather those items be obtainable by reaching certain milestones and completing specific challenges and tasks in the game to be rewarded with that item, rather than just you know pulling out your credit card and buying it. Like Halo Three was the game of my childhood, and Unlocking armor in that game was a, a way more appealing and enjoyable. Like, you had to do things like collect all the skulls in the campaign to get the Hayabusa helmet, uh, get all the achievements, beat the campaign on Legendary to get the EOD helmet, and that shit felt so rewarding. You spend all this time in campaign collecting all the skulls, getting all the, ach all the achievements, and you're rewarded with a piece of armor that you can go and show off in multiplayer. And I remember back in the day when Halo 3 first came out and I was playing multiplayer and 
At this time, I didn't know all the different armor sets that were in the game. I wasn't aware of them. But I would be playing multiplayer game after game, and in the pre-game lobby, which is something we don't have in MCC anymore. I wish I wish they would bring pre-game lobbies back, but pre-game lobby, I would always just cl click on people's uh, profiles, look at their service record, look at their file share, and in their service record where I could see their Spartan, uh, there were some people who they had armor on, which I've, I'd never seen before. I was like, Wait, what is that piece? And I would message the dude, how'd you get that armor? Message somebody else, how'd you get that armor? How, how the fuck did you get a sword on your back? And once I found out how to earn some of these pieces of armor, I set out to do just that. Like the Hayabusa helmet. When I found out how to obtain that, I stopped playing multiplayer, figured out all the skull locations, went into the campaign, started collecting the skulls. It had me jumping through rings in a specific order on one of the missions, doing all this just to get a helmet. Halo 5, you, you open rec packs. Halo Infinite, I'll probably be able to buy a helmet. In my opinion, the ways you unlock armor in Halo has gone downhill since Halo 3. Has gotten worse with each Halo game and become became less appealing. Now, in Halo Infinite, it's not the end of the world if there's a bunch of armor pieces behind a paywall. If there's a lot of armor in the game unique and interesting armor pieces that you can only obtain by completing certain tasks in the game like beating the campaign solo legendary or beating the campaign without shooting things like that i would actually do that if the to obtain the piece of armor if it was something i was interested in but yeah like i said that's one of the main reasons i'm not a huge fan of microtransactions uh well i'm talking about cosmetic microtransactions uh non-cosmetic microtransactions that's a whole nother story but yeah co I, f I don't like micro cosmetic microtransactions because i feel like it takes away from cool ways to earn these items just by playing the game but anyways free to play i think this is good for halo i do understand why some people aren't uh too happy about it um but overall i think it's a good thing who knows when the game comes out 343's anti-cheat for the game could be dog shit. The game could be infested with cheaters. Who knows? Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. And as I said, I personally prefer buying my $60 game, paying for DLC, if that means no microtransactions. If it if it means if microtransactions are still going to be in the game anyway, then shit, it might, might as well just be free to play. But yeah, those are my thoughts on Halo Infinite being free to play. Soon I'll have a video out that covers more of this community update on Halo Waypoint in regards to Halo Infinite and uh, 343 responding to some of the criticism they got uh, after the Halo Infinite gameplay reveal. And I'm also going to do a video covering the new MCC dev blog where there was a, a lot of interesting things in that. So stay tuned for that. But yeah. That's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out, everybody.